We've done some pretty weird experiments when it comes to adding stuff into resins on this channel before. Those were mostly about trying to make them stronger or give them specific properties, but you know, what if you just want to make parts that look better than what you can do with commercially available resins? And that is exactly what we're going to try to do today. I've got seven different pigments that I'm going to be trying to add into my resins, and yeah, we're going to find out which one is the best, is the prettiest in this case. Thankfully, this video is sponsored by Soriatech and their blue resin. Uh, I'm going to be using this for all the prints today. It's a strong resin that's specifically engineered for LCD printers. And I'm hoping that's going to give me a better chance of all these prints coming out cleanly. I've got the Play V2 version here, but you can also get translucent blue blue, which makes sense. So yeah, check out the Soriatech blue resin and their other resins at the link in the description. And yeah, thanks Soriatech. I'm also going to be using the Prusa SL1 for all of these prints. It's the most expensive resin printer that I own, and it's also the one that when stuff goes wrong is the most expensive to fix. But it also has one tremendous advantage when it comes to working with pigments that are suspended in resin. That's the fact that it has a tilting bed. And I'm hoping that because it does that tilting motion at every layer change, that's going to agitate the resin and the pigments in it, and it's going to keep them stirred in. Because these are physical particles, these will settle out over time if you just leave the resin as is. All of these pigments are essentially super small particles. They are all under 100 micron, and most of them have their main particle size under 50 micron. That means that they will fit in that distance of one layer height, which is going to be 50 micron, but it also means that these are kind of dangerous to work with. A mask is definitely required when you're dealing with these, and you're going to see how much dust is getting kicked up just when trying to stir these into resins. So yeah, let's get going with the mixing process. I'm using the magnetic stirrer again, and while these all get mixed up, I guess I should explain the difference between a dye and a pigment. Because you see that the resins that you can buy typically are colored with a dye. And what a dye does is it's specific to your carrier, to your base material, and it actually dissolves in that material. So. Uh, you have specific dyes for water, oil, and solvent-based paints if you want to make that. But a pigment does not dissolve, it is just literally small particles that get suspended in your base material. So they are less material specific if you can manage to stir them in neatly. Also, because they are particles, we are not limited to just adding color, we can also add effects to it. So what we've got here are a bunch of different pigments and effect particles, essentially. Most of these are basically from an artist's supply store, and then we've got some that are made for, you know, car paints, essentially. So we've got two specifically engineered effect pigments, and that's uh, from Miraval, that's Starlit White and Magic Gold. These are on the brighter side, but they have a bit of a metallic sheen to it. So they have a mix of different particles. Some give you that sheen, and some just give you um, that base color and that base effect. Then we've got this green dynamic glimmer, which is mica, uh, actually titanium dioxide coated mica, and it's got a green base pigment, and then it's got those coated mica flakes that give it a gold metallic sheen. We're gonna see if this amazing effect that you get when you stir it into your resin actually carries over into your finished prints. Then we've got these three car paint or nail polish pigments. This one's called Alien GC47, and it's mostly a rainbow holographic effect. That's gonna be interesting to see. Then next up, some stuff that is actually just dark glitter. We're gonna see how well that comes out in a print. And then lastly, of course, exactly on brand for the channel, we've got the Bora Bora Blue. This is a metallic blue, and I'm hoping this will make for some nice metallic prints. And lastly, a bit of a wild card. We've got stainless steel powder. This is just finely ground stainless steel. And we're gonna see if this mixes in and makes for, I don't know, conductive prints? No idea. But it should make for, for cool effects nonetheless. For all these pigments, I'm gonna be adding 1% by weight. That is sort of the standard mixing ratio, except for the stainless steel, because this is a much denser material. Um, if you just go by 1% by weight, that's actually gonna give you a lot less volume. So yeah, I'm just gonna see what looks good with this. All right, let's get printing.
So as you can see, this iron powder stuff settles out incredibly quickly out of the resin. So I'm gonna dump it in here. I'm gonna start the print real quick because I don't want it to form a solid layer on the bottom of the vat. That might just wreck the SL1, just like I wrecked the Mars 2 Pro in the last round of resin experience. So one last stir. And in we go. So here we are, that's all the prints that we've got. And I gotta say, I am surprised that they all printed as well as they did. Like there was literally no issues getting these parts out, even with the iron powder, which is, which we're gonna get to in a second, but this is really heavily loaded up with iron material. But let's start with our reference. But let's start with our reference print. This is just the regular Soraya Tech blue in the clear V2 color. And this printed obviously perfectly. Like with the naked eye, it's pretty hard to see any layer lines. These prints were all printed at 0.05 millimeter of a layer height. So that's 50 micron, which is the standard setting on the SO1. Now, next up, we've got the three kind of white-ish uh, materials. At a glance, these look absolutely identical. However, these are different. So the first one that I did is the magic gold. And you can see that this, yeah, this just looks milky white. But as soon as you tilt it and you hold it at the right angle, it starts glowing and glistening in this gold, not just a gold sparkle, but also like a holographic uh, gold effect kind of. And I do really like this more subtle tone of all three of these because it's not in your face. And you can totally use these colors uh, just to add a little bit of, of pop to parts that don't need to be like super over the top and super colorful. So yeah, this one has that, that shimmer to it that, that looks kind of bluish cold from one angle and then you get this gold shimmer from the other angle. And it also does have a sparkle and that's, that's really nice and subtle. Now, on the other hand, the Starlit White kind of doesn't have that. It has some snow-like glitter to it, but it doesn't have any color to it. So really it just has a, a bit of sparkle to it and it does have that, that bit of holographic uh, diffraction look to it. This is the most subtle out of all the pigments that we added. Next up, less subtle, is the Alien. And you look at it, at first glance, it's just a milky white, but you keep looking at it and it's got this sparkle to it. And there's a flip-flop that goes from like a teal to a orange almost, and it's it's, it's a really nice effect. So all three of these, really nice, really kind of subtle, more toned down effects. And I think you could reasonably do, you know, all your SLA printing with these uh, instead of doing a, a white or a clear. These are just, these are nice. So next up, the Topaz Peridot Color Shift Micro Flake. Uh, this is a, yeah, this is the most glittery out of all. And it does have that one angle, yeah, you can see it right there where it, where it glows green. But overall, it just looks like a smoky black that has a bit of glitter to it. But if you look at it at just the right angle, it's got that crazy green shimmer to it that has almost like a, a blue subtone to it. And except for the starlit white, this is the only one where you can still see the individual pigments and individual flakes doing their thing. The other ones are just more of a homogeneous material. Here you can really see the individual like glitter flakes. And if you like that effect, that's really cool. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of this overall look though. It's just a bit, it's a bit boring. Much less boring though are these two fully colored ones. So this is the, what is this called? Glimmer Gründynamisch. So this is a mica that's been coated with titanium dioxide and then a green pigment added to it. And you know, you can see it is a it is a base color in green, so the, the part is green, but it shimmers in a gold. It's got that really intense gold shimmer to it at just the right angle. There's also a bit of glitter, but that might just be from washing it in the same IPA as all these other ones that may have given off some, some of the glitter particles. But yeah, this is really cool. And then of course, my favorite, the Bora Bora Blue. Um, this is exactly the channel color. And it's also got that nice glow and that nice glistening effect to it. Um, it almost looks like it's kind of a, a velvet material if you look at it under the right light. Of course, it's also got some sparkle. I think that is actually from the pigment itself. And yeah, fully colored, um, opaque. I really do like this because it's, it's not just a plain blue. It's also got that little bit of an extra pop to it. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this stuff. 
So with all of these materials so far, it always looks like this flip-flop color shift effect is always aligned to the layers. So the actual particles that do that, even though they are smaller than what you can see with your naked eye, um, they somehow still get aligned to the layers. I'm thinking it's just the bed squishing them down. So I did try another print that was done at 100 micron instead of 50 with the Bora Bora blue, um, but you can see that in here, that did not finish. But what I think happened is that the particles in this Bora Bora Blue were just blocking out way too much light. And yeah, the print obviously failed because the layers didn't cure thoroughly enough. And lastly, we've got the iron powder. And with this one, you can really see how uh, the iron powder was settling down. So at the bottom, it is almost black. It's Well, it's very gray. And at the top, it's just a smoke gray that's left of all the powder. So this one, you know, as we already saw when stirring it in, this one settled down a lot. It's still a nice effect because it's not even, like there are some blobs on one side where there's more iron powder in the layers and there's areas where there's almost none left. To be honest, I'm not sure how practical this is because it, it just settles out so quickly. There is one thing that I do wanna try and that is to see whether this did somehow become conductive because we didn't have much luck with that um, with the graphite powder that we added last time. So if I just stick this in in resistance testing and hopefully don't poke my fingers. So yeah, there is nothing um, as expected, uh, even scraping away the top layer to expose some more of the uh, of the iron powder. This is not conductive. And to be honest, that's pretty much what I expected. So yeah, cool experiment. It does print, but I don't think this is practical at all. But these prints that have pigments that are either uh, so small that they just float in the resin and that they don't settle out or are similar in density to the resin itself, these just turned out so much better. So of course, like I said, my favorite is the Bora Bora Blue because it just matches the channel aesthetic. Uh, also, the Alien is really interesting because it has a, it really has that Alien look to it. And I mean, the Starlit White is just a, a nice subtle effect. So these three are my favorites that I will actually consider using again if I just wanna have a pretty resin print. I don't think these should impact strength all that much. I'm keeping all the premixed resins in these sealed containers so that I can shake them up and use them again anytime I want to and don't have to go back to mix them from scratch. It's not a lot, it's, it's 70 milliliters roughly left, but it should be enough for one or two nice prints. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite print is out of these. Again, I'm just really surprised by how well these all printed without any second takes, without any second tries. Uh, these printed beautifully. And I think this is actually practical. If you wanna make your own resin and if you wanna try different colors or different effects to it, this is 100% viable uh, to do yourself. So yeah, again, let me know which one of these you like the most. Um, I still do have some other pigments that I can mix into resins that are a bit less sparkly and a bit more practical, but still special. Let me know if you wanna see that or if I should go back to making more filament printer content as some have suggested under my last resin videos. Let me know. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Thanks to Sarai Tech for sponsoring this video. And yeah, uh, whether you wanna see more resin experiments or more filament printer stuff, get subscribed for sure. If you wanna support the channel, you can do so through YouTube memberships or on Patreon. And yeah, keep on making. I will see you in the next one. Bye.